I think there's something extremely fascinating about stories that make me feel an extreme amount of dread. Out of every piece of media I consume, nowadays I always tend to go back to the ones that fill me with this type of feeling. Whether it's from an anime, a film, or TV show, I always think it's those types of stories that make me think long and hard about things that terrify me or keep me up at night, like the cycle of war and misery that will never end, the madness that humanity is capable of. Weird as it might sound, media like that that just makes me think about this all is what makes for an experience that will sit in my mind for the rest of my life. And out of all of these stories that I've seen throughout the course of my entire life, there is only one that I end up coming back to over and over again. That no matter how hard I try, always manages to stick with me. This is a story of a doomed civilization that even through death and resurrection, continues to fight one another, and continues to repeat its past mistakes. One of Yoshiyuki Tomino's most ambitious and existential works to date. There is no other series I could possibly be referring to than Space Runaway Edeon. It's a story that I wish more people talked about because it genuinely has had the same effect on me as recent films like Oppenheimer did. It was a story where by the end of it all just left me horrified about the future humanity has created for itself. This is a story I always wanted to make a video about, but I just never knew how to do it. But today, I'm here to say that this story from the beginning to where it ultimately leaves off is one of my favorite anime, Hell. One of my favorite stories of all time. That despite being 40 years old, couldn't be more relevant today than ever. <laughs> This series, especially the film Be Invoked, are known as one of Yoshiyuki Tomino's darkest and most violent works that he has ever directed. And watching another certain work of his compelled me to look back at this gem because I think the messages he wanted to tell not only are prevalent in this series, but unfortunately is something that still clearly applies to events happening in this day and age. In this story, Yoshiki Tomino explores why things end up the way that they ultimately do, why people hate each other, why they fight, and why they continue to carry on making the same mistakes that they do. So in order to explore the meaning of what Tomino wanted to tell us in this series, we have to start at the beginning. In the beginning of this series, these solo colonists, also known as the Logodao aliens, were attacked by the Buff Clan while discovering three massive mechs that could be docked into a single powerful robot known as the Edeon a giant that quickly displayed his power to everyone present. And despite seeing their comrades fall to the giant's power, they still try to chase down these solo colonists to the ends of the universe. Through creating new means to destroy the Edeon, the buff clan along with the solo ship discover the boundless power that the Edeon holds. As the fight rages on, more people from both sides continue to fall victim to this endless conflict. And this war still has no signs of ending. Despite the efforts to end the fighting before things escalate even further, each side does something that prolongs the fighting even more. Even to where the series ultimately leaves off, they still can't do anything but to fight. So why is this? Even after every single mistake and wrongdoing they've each made, why do both sides still continue to fight like this? Even because of events that took place within the last four years, this question became all the more apparent to me. Because at the end of the day, it's a very complicated question that Tomino attempts to answer. Human conflict has existed since the dawn of humanity, and it's something that the world has become familiar with. One main thing that we all have in common with our parents, grandparents, ancestors, on and on, is that we all know what war is. We've all either experienced it, lived through it, or learned about war at some point in our lives. And despite knowing why these conflicts start, despite what everyone knows what they're getting themselves into, why do we still fight? In several works that Tomino has made, he mainly used the setting of his shows to brilliantly show how conflict can either be used to separate people, or even more optimistically, bring people together. It doesn't always involve a war between powerful military forces, but most of the time it involves a conflict or dispute between human beings that often escalates into something even further. 
showing how madness can create more madness, creating something that can nearly be impossible to stop. The conflicts he often depicts have involved conflicts between different races, different ideas, the list can go on and on. And oftentimes in real life, despite the many centuries of fighting, we still fight with nothing learned from the past as these mistakes continue to be repeated. And while this video isn't here to focus on this topic, I'm mainly going to discuss why these people in these series continue to make these mistakes, if you will. These very subtle wrongdoings that end up dooming their entire race. In this series, war continues because of the things I listed earlier. This story brilliantly dives into what the individual characters fight for instead of focusing on an ordinary battle between good versus evil. And while there's no inherent right or wrong answer to why they continue to fight, there are many people in this series who have people they fight for. Some fight to protect their loved ones, some who fight because their loved ones were taken away from them, some fight for status, some fight for their homeland, some fight to correct the wrongs that befell them. Everyone fights for their own unique reasons, and this series not only takes its time in showing us what makes this conflict so nuanced and complex, but it shows us how hard it is for a conflict to simply resolve itself. As Tomino has shown in many of his works and in the story for example, that there are those who never wanted to get involved but had to because there was no other option. There's never a clear answer to why people fight. It's not always a case of I want to beat the bad guys, it can be a case of wanting to fight because it's the only way to survive what happened to someone's home, or wanting to take a stance against an unfair government. It's not a clear black and white answer. And as this series points out, there are times where the reasons for fighting could change the more it continues to rage on. This scene alone captured the madness that surrounded this conflict. This whole war between the Solo colonists and the Buff Clan all started because the Buff Clan attacked the people of Planet Solo. Naturally, those being invaded would fight back to protect themselves, forcing them to leave their planet behind. And for the rest of the series, even to the end of Be Invoked, the Buff Clan continued to chase down the Solo ship to the ends of the galaxy if it meant wiping out the Edeon or taking control of it. Something they knew possessed tremendous power, but like the solo ship crew, had no idea how to control it. The entire series was just a continuous span of back and forths, and the more both sides continued to fight, the more powerful the Edeon became. Despite the Buff Clan's urge to gain this power, the solo ship however never really wanted to fight. They only used the Edeon because there was no other option as they were being invaded. They had no idea what it was or what it was capable of, but used it anyway because it was either do nothing and die, or fight back using this mysterious mech that they excavated. As they continued to use the Edeon to protect themselves from the Buff Clan, the fight between both sides continued to anger the Edeon. As the more the solo ship came to understand what the Edeon even is, it does something completely out of nowhere and surprises literally everyone. With this understanding of what the Edeon is truly capable of, I also came to understand that with many of Tomino's works, he places a huge emphasis on how people can come to understand each other. In Mobile Suit Gundam, he showed us how human beings can understand each other completely. Something like that can be possible to them. A world where people can rid themselves of war can only come into light when people can become new types. But that understanding can lead to tragedy as Gundam has shown us over and over again. Even through the entire span of Tomino's universal century, there are signs of people with this ability, but most of, if not every time, the same result occurs of tragedies befalling them, with the same mistakes being made in a never-ending cycle. But I think this emphasis on understanding each other is used in this series but to tremendous effect. The Solo Ship crew made an effort to understand the Buff Clan despite everything they've done to them. Karola and Gijay are clear examples of this. All the way towards the end of the series, they work together with the Solo Ship until the bitter end. But on the other side, the more the Buff Clan pursued the Solo Ship, the more infused of hatred and vengeance they all became. The Buff Clan didn't want to stop, and like I mentioned, the Solo Ship couldn't either, because they would die. There are multiple parts in this series and in Be Invoked where negotiations never worked. They all fought with one thing in mind, that understanding what the Edeon truly is. That they can protect themselves from the opposing side. Instead of understanding each other, they chose to try to understand what they were both fighting for. And honestly, I think this is what the Edeon represents. 
This godly force that resembles what will indirectly cause both sides to push on in their pursuit of victory. It tests them, it brings them into conflict, and sees if each side can move past their differences. Hoping to work together to understand the Edeon, meaning that they can understand why they were fighting each other. But as it seems in this series, one step forward sets us a hundred more steps backwards. Like I've mentioned, negotiations never seem to work, and because of these failed attempts to prevent any more damage from happening, the Ide came to the conclusion that the Buff Clan and the Solo Ship will never come to understand each other, thus starting what we know as the entire events of being invoked. But there was another aspect that Tomno seemed to really lean towards and what led the Ide to basically giving up on both sides and letting them fight it out one last time. And this all ties back to both the Solo Ship and the Buff Clan and how similar they handled a certain thing. In Tomino's other works, he places a heavy emphasis on how important it is to foster the young generation so that they can make the world a much better place than it was before. Where in some of his stories they involve the younger generation being failed by their previous generation or even those managing to do something that their previous generation couldn't. I know you're probably wondering why I'm talking about this idea so much, but it's something that Tomino to this day brings so much attention to, whether it's in interviews or even planted in his stories. In Mobile Suit Gundam it can appear very subtle at first glance, but in later series that Tomino ends up directing, that idea is vital to the series. Still unfamiliar with what I'm even on about? Well, in the fourth episode of Mobile Suit Gundam, this idea is pretty much present in that episode. The dying captain of the White Base gives up his position as captain to Bright Noah, who is only 19 years old. Someone who's young and hasn't truly experienced war and conflict like he did. One of the people who also took responsibility for the dying captain said it perfectly himself. He said that as the war gets more fierce, we're losing those who have more to teach us. It's clear that the main cast are mostly just kids who are thrust into the war with no idea what to do, with nobody to help them through it. Without guidance from the previous generation, they won't be able to lead on. They won't be able to help themselves, and so on. And depending on how the previous generation fosters the next generation, things can turn out great or devastating. So enough of these examples, the reason why I'm bringing this up though is because Edeon is a story that resulted in the failure of many generations of people. A failure that resulted in a devastating outcome. But who was responsible for committing these mistakes? Well, starting with the Buff Clan, we have Karla and her sister Harulu's father, the Supreme Commander Doba. From what he says and what he does, it can sound like he's a noble and just man. He describes himself as a man who fights for both justice and the protection of his own race. But he's someone who's completely infused with this idea, and it's because of his infatuation with his own ideals that in turn ends up completely destroying his own family. It caused him to push away his daughter Carla, which led her to falling in love with the enemy, even having a child, which alone proved that both races could coexist together. She could have been the key to stopping this pointless conflict, but it was his rejection of both her and the solo ship crew that in turn drove Harulu down a path of sorrow and revenge. Her character is one that absolutely stood out as a victim of the failed generation, being completely unhappy being a woman who was forced to be exactly what her father wanted her to be, a samurai, a warrior. Being who she is, she is resentful to her family because of the life she was born into, but doesn't want to go against this way of life because it would be that same society that she's a part of that would tear her apart, shunning her away from society like her sister Karola. This is all what led her to completely fall for the delusions of fighting a very useless fight against the solo ship, pretty much letting her father use her emotions of grief and anger to add more fuel to the fire, and it's what led to her demise as well. With hearing how terrible Doba was, you would think that the Soul Ship crew wouldn't possibly be this bad, right? Well, with all of this in mind, they end up making the same mistakes that the Buff Clan makes. People like Cheryl, who knows why the Ide favors children, tried to take advantage of the Ide's power and thus died because of it. And when Karula reveals that she's pregnant with Bess's child, while they do want to protect it from the Buff Clan, they end up looking at it in a very different way, treating the baby as their savior, hence the baby's name, Messiah using both infants' power to protect themselves from the buff clan. But it doesn't end there. Throughout the entire series, they realize that the Ide seems to favor younger people, so they are inadvertently using children for their own survival, and they haven't really realized this mistake until it's already too late. It's something that I'm surprised people miss upon watching this film. 
that despite the heroes of the series fighting against the buff clan, people who have committed more atrocities than the solo ship ever could share the same common mistakes with them, and it couldn't stop. Even though there is a point that the Ide has always had control and everything was predetermined, I feel like things could have been avoided, that these wrongdoings could have been worked out. And while I'm aware this is pretty clear in the context of the story, it made me think of something much larger that I couldn't imagine I would think about. That given we understood our fate, what would ultimately happen to us because of what we'll end up doing? Would we be able to prevent it? Or is it our nature as human beings that makes us continue to fight and hate each other even when we know our efforts are ultimately pointless? And this brings me back to something else that thinking about this film made me appreciate more. When I went into this, all I knew was that everyone here is going to die. But seeing everything unfold here, seeing every single misunderstanding that led to a character's death, not only left me horrified to see everyone else share a fate as horrible and brutal as Carla's for instance, but it left me hoping that this wasn't going to be true. Even our protagonists share this hope, which is why I think this film, despite as bleak and horrific as it is, has Cosmo be the main source of hope that made me honestly believe that he is one of my favorite protagonists from a Tomino story ever. Cosmo has pretty much lost every single important person in his life near the final parts of this film, and in several hopeless, heartbreaking, and honestly disturbing ways, is shown that his efforts are useless. That it was always their fate that things were supposed to turn out like this. But despite all of this, he doesn't let that dictate his own life. After everything, the fact that he can still hold it together is nothing short of inspiring. お前らのセリフじゃないけど運命は自分で作ってみせる。じゃあ、私たちはなぜ生きてきたの？俺たちだって龍が召し合った同じだ。十分に生きちゃいないんだ。俺たちは嫌なことが全て遅かったのかもし
In the end, peace was achieved but at the cost of everyone being brutally massacred and torn apart by each other. As the Edeon has been making evident throughout this entire film, they failed. But as they all regroup together as wandering spirits as they prepare for the beginning of a new species, there is a hope that things can be different. But there is also a lingering feeling of dread that awaits as the curtain closes on this film. Even though the Edeon was destroyed along with everyone from both sides, I can't help but imagine if something like the Edeon will come into existence once more, to test the next generation if they too are worthy of living. As the series pointed out, the Edeon was found in their protagonist's home, completely untouched and fully operational, and we found out later in the story that the people who previously lived there mysteriously went extinct. But only the Edeon remained. It makes me think that the generation that fails and learn ultimately what happens once they die is what merges together into what we know as the Ide, that tries to get the next generation to prove that they can be good people. It puts the idea that something like this has happened before. It can happen again and again, over and over. Maybe it's just in our nature as human beings to fight against one another until the bitter end. That war and conflict seems to be the only way we can solve the problems that we have. That the future we're building for future generations after us will be one that is worse than ours. With war coming and going like a common cold. There is a very recent quote from Yoshiyuki Tomino where he shares his opinion on the events that started in Ukraine that really speaks to what he warned us all who watched Ideon. When being asked if the situation we're facing now is worse or better than 100 years ago, he had this to say. Well, it's as if we're still playing the same political game as we did a hundred years back. Not a single step forward. If anything, things have taken a turn for the worse. Just because our weapons got more sophisticated, our manner of conflict did. I think this quote from Tomino is what solidified his messages in this story. As much as people like to rip on Tomino for having a lot of dark things or subject matters in his stories, even though his more recent stuff is nothing near stories like Edeon, Zeta, or Victory for instance, but there is a reason why these stories depict things the way that they do besides the state of his mental health. Like any story that depicts unsettling or hard to watch topics, there is a reason to why this story is here. Because there is something that Tomino and those involved with creating this story wanted to tell. That there is something deeply wrong about humanity that we should recognize and do something about. And it was because of being invoked largely that made me think about, well, everything. The more I've been an adult, the more it feels like the hatred and destruction that spreads around the entire world becomes harder and harder to avoid. Watching this film made me realize that Tomino had this concern like many of us, and he wants us to be aware of it. That despite the inherent good of humanity that is present, there is an abundance of negativity and darkness that surrounds the actions of people all over the world. That there are those when presented with an overwhelming power are always hungry for something more that can in turn start a vicious struggle of control over something that could never be controlled. A struggle that reveals the worst of humanity in more ways than one, that separates each and every one of them and makes them forget that at the end of all of this, despite the things that make us all inherently different, we're all just people. Human beings who live on the same planet. And because they forgot this, each side ends up repeating the same horrors and atrocities that humanity itself has committed in the past. There's a lot I can say about how Edeon can reflect the world we live in and the horrible qualities of humanity, but at the end of all of this, I think this story, if nothing more, serves as a sobering reminder about something very possible for us, and humanity as a whole, if we keep making the same mistakes that we as a species had made a hundred years ago. Which brings me to what I believe Tomino was trying to warn us about. If humanity can't come together, if humanity can't stop making the same stupid mistakes, then we truly are a lost civilization that doesn't deserve to continue living on. In that first time I finished watching Be Invoked, I sat there and wondered for hours. If there is a chance that we can grow and move past these mistakes, can a better future for us truly be achieved? Can something like that ever happen? Will there ever be a world where conflict is nothing but a figment of our imagination? Or will we end up like the misfortunate souls who continue to fight amongst each other for all of eternity? Will there ever be a hopeful solution for this problem? Well, there is one. A solution Tomino came up with nearly two decades later. An answer called... Turn A Gundam.